Hi guys, some of us out there might think we were a little hasty in rushing out and buying the Founders Edition of the GTX 10 series card. So, let's improve our Founders Edition card by fitting a cheap liquid cooling kit to it. Why do we want to do this? Well, I want to overclock my card as much as I can and make sure it stays dead cool whilst doing so. Anyway, let's see if I can't fit this without breaking the card. Cracky. So, for this project, we decided to fit the Frost Flow 240G liquid cooling kit from ID Cooling, and this is what the box should have looked like. However, we were a little bit worried when ours came in the box for the 240LR, which was meant for CPU cooling. However, luckily we found that the contents in the box were actually for the correct kit for the GPU cooling. Oh, and the instructions, well, they were terrible. They're about as much use as a chocolate teapot, to be honest. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here, using a number three Allen key, we're going to remove 10 Allen bolts from the GTX 1070. And when these are taken out, it will allow us to easily remove the shroud from the graphics card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Next, we'll remove the alloy heatsink from the graphics card. Using the heat from the hairdryer, we'll remove the warranty sticker in case we need it in the future. The heatsink now is easily removed. Now we should remove the fan cover. Now we need to remove both back plates off the graphics card. And there's a series of tiny screws you need to undone before you're able to do this. Now with the back plate removed, we're going to have to undo 13 hex bolt screw things, I guess you'd call them, that have a hole in the middle, a screw hole in the middle where the screws we remove from the back plate actually fix into. Um, the best thing to remove these is using a socket set and finding a small socket that will fit these. Now we should remove all the screws from the connector end of the graphics card where the HDMI ports and display ports are etc. And now the rest of the plastic housing should come away fairly easily, but just remember to undo the power connector for the fan. 
Remove any thermal pads that may be left on your RAM chips and then you're going to need to clean the thermal paste off the GPU thoroughly. Using the silicone heatsink plaster, we need to stick the heatsinks on top of each RAM chip for the cooling of the RAM. Next, prepare the heatsink for attachment to the GPU. And now apply a good quality thermal paste to the GPU. With the graphics card upside down, carefully line up the holes and attach the heatsink to the GPU. Put the back plate on and then the retaining clip on top and then put this put the bolts on around in a crisscross fashion. Only do them up finger tight to start with and then once all of them are on tighten them up with a screwdriver. And now the mod's complete and so it's time to put into the PC and run some tests and see how cool she runs. Well the results are much better than I expected. We managed to overclock the card by an extra 260 megahertz and get a Firestrike graphics score of 20,614 whilst keeping the temperature below 41 degrees centigrade. And whilst gaming we actually managed to game for half an hour and our temperature only got up to 51 degrees. So overall a great result. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. And if you want to see more from me, please hit the subscribe button.